Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters in Christ, and those who have not yet come to Christ. I pray this reaches whoever uh, needs to hear it. Amen. As I believe that Yeshua, Jesus, is God Almighty, He is God manifested in the flesh, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, who was and is and is to come. He is the Lord God Almighty. That's according to Isaiah 9 verse 6, Micah 5 verse 2, Revelations 1, John chapter 1, and Colossians chapter 1. They all speak of Yeshua, Jesus, as God Almighty, as God in the flesh. Amen. I believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three, are one, according to John 14. 1 John 5 verse 7 and Deuteronomy 6 4 in the King James Bible. Amen. Today I would like to share a dream that I had on March 27th, 2024, as I believe it was most likely from the Lord God Almighty, as Acts chapter 2 says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen. Now, I don't believe that every dream is from God. I believe that the enemy, the devil, and his fallen angels who operate in the spiritual realm can also give uh, false visions and false dreams uh, to discredit the body of Christ, to confuse the body of Christ. And so we have to be careful in our discernment and pray that the Holy Spirit guides us in these things. Amen. The scripture says, Despise not prophesying, prove all things, and hold fast to that which is good. Amen. So I feel that when I had this dream, I didn't really understand it. It just seemed really random. But as I woke up and I was praying about it, I believe the Holy Spirit was beginning to give me understanding or interpretation on what it means. And so I'll just uh, go ahead and read to you uh, what I wrote down when I woke up from the dream and also give you my interpretation of what it possibly could mean as well. In the dream, I was at some sort of corporate-like event or celebration. I think I was with a girlfriend, although I don't have a girlfriend at the moment. I actually think it was my ex-girlfriend. We were with friends and celebrating some sort of corporate achievement in a high up skyscraper type building. And all of a sudden, I looked around and was disgusted with all the evil around me. And it also seemed like a dark spiritual evil was there at the event. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Devil's Advocate, <laughs> I don't recommend watching it, but it's just full of this weird, demonic, spiritual uh, stuff, this, this demonic atmosphere, and that's kind of how it felt. It's kind of hard to explain. At that point, when I began to see all this evil in the atmosphere just lurking beneath the surface, I decided to go to the bathroom, and when I was going back to the party, or the event after using the bathroom, I had this feeling that I needed to leave, that something really bad was about to happen at that exact moment, and I had to leave immediately if I wanted to live. An elevator was closing, and I hesitated because I didn't want to leave behind my girlfriend and, and my friends at the party uh, but I know that I had to leave at that moment or I would not survive. I was able to 
basically uh, stick my hand into the elevator before the door closed I was able to get into the elevator and as soon as the elevator door closed it's like some explosion hit the building and all of a sudden the roof on the elevator came down on us and was squishing us as we were descending into the bottom floors of the building. Now I'm reading from what I wrote but I'm also adding uh, what I remember as well from my memory. Now after the elevator reached the bottom floor to the lobby there was you know chaos everybody was was uh, panicking to leave to exit the building and I was able to get out some sort of door some lobby door onto the street and I'm just out outside walking uh, safely and I decided to just walk around the block to collect my thoughts on what just happened and I circle around the block and I go to the other side of the building I think it was a building entrance or one of the sides you know kind of like a downtown building there's multiple entrances depending on what street uh, you enter into okay now when I circled around the building and I came to the other entrance um, I saw a group of people standing there who were also sort of in shock that they just survived I remember looking at the group of people and seeing all these people that I knew and I remember I, I didn't see my girlfriend there and I was sort of you know I was really sad um, and kind of you know sh still in shock and you know I, I, I was with all these people that I supposedly knew although in real life I, I have no idea who those people were but in that dream I had the understanding that these are people that I knew they were able to escape uh, as well as myself now I began to have this immediate sort of survivor's guilt that you know some of my friends and my girlfriend uh, were not able to exit the building uh, before the explosion hit but I knew that I had to leave at that exact moment or I would not have survived then there was an older gentleman that came to the group and he was sort of like the leader of the group and he began to you know talk to us and, and, and guide us on you know how to cope with these things and for some reason I had this feeling like I really knew this guy like I really could trust him and he came with a handful of ashes and we began to say a prayer over the ashes and, and I think he was a Jamaican man and he began to you know say a, a prayer for all of us and then there was other people in different languages also saying prayers in their own language and we're all coming together as one uh, saying prayers over these ashes and after that I, I woke up from the dream now at first I didn't have any idea what any of this meant it all just seemed like random sequences of, of events I wasn't really in the right state of mind uh, during the dream uh, but then I, I started to you know pray about what it could mean and I began to have this understanding uh, and this is the interpretation that I wrote down I think this dream could be from the Lord and it could be about escaping the sudden destruction that is soon to come by means of the rapture and how we have to leave the world behind and it will be a sad departure and full of grief now remember in the dream uh, I had to leave immediately I didn't have time to go convince people inside this demonic corporate event to leave the building you know just as we have many friends and loved ones who are still in the world partaking in the world uh, but they just are not able to escape because they're you know caught up in that stuff you know just like the parable of the ten virgins Okay, there was ten virgins, five were wise, five were foolish, five had oil, five did not have oil, 
And when the bridegroom came immediately for his bride, the, the wise entered in, but the foolish were left behind. It's because they had money. The foolish virgins had money. They had gold, they had riches, but they had no oil. And so they were not ready to escape. They were not ready to go to be with the bridegroom. Okay, just like many, you know, even believers, people who confess Christ, they're still living in the world, in this demonic atmosphere. And they are drinking from the cup of devils. But scripture says, you know, you shall have one God. The Lord your God is the only God you should serve. And you cannot drink from the cup of devils and from the cup of God. You cannot be a, a friend of the world and a friend of God because the two are at war with each other. Now, as far as meeting this group of survivors, I believe this is kind of talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb when those who are, you know, raptured up to heaven are taken up and escape the sudden destruction. Okay, we will all be one family out of every tribe and tongue and ethnicity. And Christ is like our leader there who will comfort us and guide us through the grief and the shock of it all. And when the leader of the group began to pray over the ashes, it was like we were grieving over what we lost. It was like we were grieving over the destruction that we witnessed and it is like we are trying to intercede possibly as well um so that that's my interpretation on it and i just wanted to share that dream i thought it was pretty interesting because when god has his his body of believers together we will all be one body and we will be a family uh, that is made up of every tribe and ethnicity and we will all become one in christ and we will have to you know overcome this this grief of this loss and and all of this uh post-traumatic stress that we just witnessed and, and endured um to some degree but scripture says that you know God will wipe away every tear when we are with him in, in his kingdom in, in New Jerusalem. Amen. You know, and, and as sad as it is to, you know, have friends and families and loved ones who will not come out of the world, who will not listen to our, our warnings and, you know, escape the judgment that is to come. You know, we can't make that decision for them. All we could do is try to warn them and, and get them out of the building, so to speak. Get them out of the the ways of the world and, and into the Ark of Christ uh, before the explosion hits. Because the Bible says that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction will come as labor pain comes upon a woman who is pregnant and they shall not escape okay that's in first thessalonians chapter 5 and just as in the days of noah and the days of lot they're just going about their business until sudden destruction came the flood came upon the people of noah's generation and it took them by surprise because they didn't believe. They didn't believe the warnings of Noah. And Lot and his family also tried to warn them to do right. But they did not take heed. And so the angel of the Lord uh, took Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that same day, fire and brimstone rained down from heaven. And Jesus said, it'll be like this when the day of the lord comes when when the son of man uh comes again okay he will the the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night and christ will take his bride will snatch his bride out of harm's way before the sudden destruction hits this is my understanding 
as Jesus says in Matthew 24, Luke 21, that one will be, two will be in the field, one shall be taken or received, and the other refused or left, left behind. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken and the other refused, according to the Tinsdale translation. So I believe this is a sudden a sudden rescue event where suddenly people vanish. You know, in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, in the twinkling of an eye. Okay, the dead will rise first, and those who are alive and remain in Christ will be caught up to be with him in the air forever. Amen? So it is in the snap of a finger in the blink of an eye that these people will be taken up to safety. And, uh, you know, Jesus said, let us watch and pray always that we are counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man in Luke 21, verse 36. So we have to be ready. We have to have oil in our lamps. We have to come out of the world lest we be partakers of our sins. Amen. And I hope to see you all in heaven very soon. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and bring you shalom, peace, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.